Senator from Montana. Madam President, the health and livelihoods of the American people are at risk. They're in danger. We cannot afford to keep squabbling and arguing here in the United States Senate. Time is not on our side. Each day matters. In fact, every hour matters. As we look at the stats coming in terms of those who have been affected with COVID-19, literally it's hour by hour. This is a logarithmic kind of scale. This is a doubling every day kind of scale that's going on. Hours matter, minutes matter. And like many of my colleagues here in the United States Senate, I've been talking to Montanans around the clock to get their feedback. Hospital leaders, ag groups, tribal leaders, small business leaders, construction workers. We are in a public health and an economic crisis. I have not sensed fear like this from the American people any time in my life. I remember 9-11. I remember the crisis of 2008. I remember the 1987 crash. Those pale in comparison to what we're seeing today at this very moment in our country. This is a time that we need to come together. This is a time we must get this done for the good of our country. Listen, neither side is going to be happy with the final product. That's part of negotiation. It's give and it's get. And this Senate bill before us provides relief for workers, for families, for small businesses, and for healthcare professionals. I tell you what, I've heard some things said today on the floor of the United States Senate that are flat out not true. Let me set some of the facts straight what this bill before us does do. It provides $250 billion of unemployment insurance for those who've lost their jobs during the coronavirus outbreaks, $250 billion. What that means in Montana is $600 a week. That is, that is twice as big as what's currently paid per week. It's $4 billion for masks, for gowns, for gloves, ventilators. It's the PPE discussion I just had a couple hours ago with some of my hospital leaders and doctors and medical leaders across Montana. They're scared of the shortage of PPE. This bill provides $4 billion to the CDC to address that. And I tell you what, dinking around here over this today, we lost another day. We could be moving forward to get it into the hands of our healthcare professionals. It provides $350 billion to allow our small businesses to survive and rebound. Listen, we have had some very healthy, prosperous, good small businesses that employ a lot of people in Montana. These are good jobs. And now they're not just worried about liquidity, they're worried about insolvency. These are ranchers. These are restaurant owners. It provides $10.5 billion dollars for drug development to treat and prevent the virus. Listen, we will not stop the panic we see right now in our country until we stop the pandemic. And we won't stop this pandemic until we have drugs available for the American people that will provide immunity to them. There's great hope on the horizon. There's amazing vaccines. There's amazing what they call monoclonal antibodies through incredible ingenuity and innovation that we can provide to the American people before the second wave hits this fall. Listen, you talk to the doctors, our best leaders at NIH, at the FDA, at the CDC, they're telling us there's probably a second wave pandemic coming in the fall of 2020 if we don't act now. Because as is true with most of the world, we don't have the immune systems here to combat this virus, this, this coronavirus that produces COVID-19. And so you either get the immunity from catching the disease or getting a vaccine or these other drugs that can provide the antibodies. Listen, there's good news in the horizon. What did we do in this bill? We're going to allow the acceleration of manufacturing so we can get this in a widespread distribution across for the American people to protect them in the next flu season when most scientists believe we probably get hit with this again. And we just lost another day here in the U.S. Senate. Every day matters. 
We have vaccine trials going as we speak in Seattle. They started Monday. There's 45 individuals that received a vaccine that we believe can protect you from the coronavirus. Can you imagine the good news for the American people? We found out we've got a vaccine that will protect us. We have a drug that will protect us. We have therapeutics that will help us if we contract the coronavirus. We just lost another day. That could be a day we could have been closer to getting that in the hands of the American people. We're in a race for time. We're now into the end of March. We've got to get this available by September to the American people. This is literally an all of government Manhattan Project kind of approach. And we just lost another day here because we couldn't get this passed in the U.S. Senate. This also provides $75 billion for our hospitals and our health care providers. Those are the men and women on the front lines right now saving lives. God bless them. $75 billion for them. And if you heard the Democrats talk about this bill, you think there's nothing here for the average hardworking person in this country. That's absolutely false. And we can lay it all out. And there's parts of this bill I don't like. There's parts of this bill I would change. But we've got to be satisfied now with a good 80 for 20 because speed matters. It matters to get something done. The American people are looking here at the dysfunction in Washington. They don't understand. Frankly, I don't either. And this bill before us was written by Republicans and Democrats. I'll tell you why I know that. Because I was part of helping negotiate to get this $10 billion for this acceleration of vaccines and drug program. I, I went in this weekend. We were sitting looking at spreadsheets that said, here's the Republican ask. Here's the Democrat ask. They're spreadsheets. We can show them to you. We were going back and forth in a bipartisan way to try to craft a bill here that we could pass in the Senate last night. In fact, the American people are watching both sides in this kind of ping pong match today around one, says, one, one side says one thing, one side says the other. Sometimes I look to people like Susan Collins and Lamar Alexander at moments like this. I think few Americans, few senators would claim that either Lamar or Susan are hyper-partisan senators. They've got a pretty good temperature of the Senate. They've got a pretty good sense of finding ways to make things work. When you hear Senator Susan Collins down here outraged at what happened, when Senator Schumer and Speaker Pelosi basically put the brakes on the discussions, we lost another day, maybe two, by demanding this bill includes an ideological wish list. Susan Collins is outraged. Lamar Alexander, he was shocked. Let me tell you something. When Susan Collins is outraged and Lamar Alexander is shocked about what's going on around here, that tells you something. You can discount what I'm saying here in many Republican senators and Democrat senators, but those two senators are viewed as some of the most bipartisan senators here. And when they're outraged and shocked, that tells you what's going on in terms of one of the low levels of partisanship that we've achieved here in the U.S. Senate over the course of the last couple of days. This obstruction will create a devastating impact on American workers, on families and small businesses. They're pushing for things that have nothing to do with the public health and the economic crisis we're facing today. The issues they're pushing have nothing to do with overcoming this pandemic. And in a global pandemic, some have tossed aside bipartisanship to push for airline emission standards. I was, I was told there's no such thing as a House bill. Well, that's false. Here's Nancy Pelosi's House bill. She's part of the discussions. Why? Because we need something that can pass the Senate quickly now and then go to the House even more quickly. And let me tell, some, so, tell the American people something else. The House is not here this week. I was just speaking with a Montana on the phone off the floor of the U.S. Senate a few minutes ago. I was describing what's going on. He was despondent, by the way, fearing both the pandemic and also the economic panic as he's losing his business. And had you realized the U.S. House is not even in town right now? He goes, I didn't know that. They're not. They left town last week. They're not here. They're not here. At a moment when the country needs us, the U.S. House left town. They are not here as we speak. I think that's been lost in the discussion. So we can debate this another time there on the road, some of their ideological requests. I mean, here's one from Pelosi's bill. The full offset of domestic airline emissions by 2025 for airlines that use assistance under Section 101 of the Pelosi bill. It's right here. Okay, well, we can have a debate another time about whether or not they should have a part of this new green deal to offset airline emissions. Now is not the time to debate. Now is the time to save the American people, both economically and with their health. We need to get our priorities straight. 
And that means putting the American people first. By the way, this is not a stimulus package. It's the wrong name for it. This is not a recovery package. That's the wrong name for it. This is a rescue package. That's what we're debating on right now is a rescue package. We must come together, both sides. The coronavirus is not partisan. It crosses party lines. It crosses country boundaries. This is a global challenge. It's on the shores of our country. It is time to come together, both sides, vote this bill out of the Senate yesterday. But that didn't happen. The next best time is today. I urge my colleagues on both sides to set aside the perfect and move forward with this to restore the confidence of the American people for their health and their economic well-being. Thank you, Madam President.